Hi everyone! Before we dive into this week's episode, please check out our promo of the week. All the way back in the beginning of recorded history, there's been one thing that humans have excelled at, both in effectiveness and creativity, and that's been finding the cruelest and most innovative ways to hurt or kill one another. And on our new show, we plan on covering all of it. Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Dan. And we host a podcast called Torture. It's a show where we examine the most horrible things people have done to one another over the centuries and tell you about all the methods and devices that our ancestors were able to come up with, including the when, the where, and the people they were used on. Yeah, we'll go way back. We're talking biblical times, ancient Rome, ancient Greece, ancient China, to cover things like crucifixion, Ling Chi, and the brazen bull. Up to medieval Europe for everything like the choke pair, the guillotine, and the rack. And the more modern days like solitary confinement, waterboarding, and electrocution. But that's only a small part of the history of human cruelty, because to really cover the issue, we also have to talk about the people that implemented them and the events in which they were used. Historical figures like Vladi Impaler, Nero, and Pol Pot. Groups, institutions, and cults like the Viet Cong, Um Shinrikyo, and the CIA. Notable and historical events like the Japanese rape of Nanking, any one of the many inquisitions, and the story of Blanche Monnier. And it wouldn't be a podcast about human cruelty if we didn't cover some of the most sadistic people to ever live. Process serial killers like H.H. Holmes, Fred and Rosemary West, Robert Bordella, and of course, B.T.K. But the most important and controversial topic we will cover in depth and to great lengths, the vital discussion and observation of... The complete and utter difference between Irish and American foods. We talk about it a lot. A lot. Like so, so fucking much. Every episode, somehow we just end up talking about, well, this is American food. Well, this is Irish food. I don't... So much you think it's too much, but then you realize it's not quite enough. Yeah, like it's a, it's a little... Like at this, at this point, we could probably just rename the podcast The Difference Between Irish and American Food and A Little Bit of Torture. <laughs> Very good. Do it as like an off branch. Yes. Saying <laughs> I don't. I don't understand. Anyways, uh, we'll have new episodes every two weeks on Sundays. So go find us on Twitter and Instagram at TorturePod. Email us at TorturePod at gmail dot com and like, follow, and subscribe. And most importantly, listen to Torture: A History of Human Cruelty, starting June twenty sixth, wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Jill. And this is Crime Divers. Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back. So today we have a lot of sword, but before we get into that, we would just like to thank our newest patron. Yes, thank and welcome our newest patron, yeah. Emma. Hi yeah. Emma, thank you for joining. Yep, thanks for heading on over to Patreon and, and joining us there. So, If anybody else would like to join Emma over there, um, you know, for ad-free episodes, bonus episodes, early, early access. access episodes, then it's patreon.com slash crime divers. So, Laura, shall we just dive into your case? Yes. Right, so what's it called? It's called A Wrongful Conviction. Okay. And where in the world are we? We are in Australia. You had to think about that there. Well, because it starts off in New Zealand, and I was like, I've got confused there. I was like, oh, it's not... It's, but it's, the, 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 the actual crime is in... Or is it a crime? Or because is it a crime? Yeah, I was going to say because it's a wrongful. Yes, so we are in Australia. Okay, so should we dive in? Let's dive in. So Alice Lynn Murchison was born on the 4th of March 1948 in Wakatane, New Zealand. 
her parents were Cliff and Avis, sorry, my own writing again. She was known as Lindy from a young age, um, but her and her family, they actually moved to Australia in 1969. So they were members of a church, which is where Lindy met New Zealand-born Michael Chamberlain, and he was a pastor. They began a relationship and very quickly they got married. So that was on the 18th of November, 1969. So it was pretty much in the same year because they only moved to Australia in 1969. No, oh, well. So it was a very quick thing. Yeah. Um, so they spent the first five years of their marriage living in Tasmania, but they eventually moved to Mount Isa in Northern Queensland. So in the 1970s, the Chamberlains had two sons. Uh, Aidan was born in 1973 and Regan was born in 1976. But, you know, they had hopes for a girl, so they tried again, and they were lucky enough to have a girl this time. Um, and that, Sorry, actually, they had two girls. So they had two daughters, Azaria. Um, she was born in June 1980, and they also later had Kalia, who was born in November 1982. But what I'm about to tell you happens before Kalia was actually born. So right. at this point, they only have the two boys... And Azaria. Yeah, okay. So the family, they decided to go on a camping trip in August 1980. So, like I just said, this was before Callie was born. And Azaria, she was only two months old at the time. Right. That they went away. So quite early. For yeah. All the other. Um, they arrived there on the 16th of August. So on their second night, 17th of August, a nightmare was about to unfold. So while sleeping in their tent... um. Or well, sorry, whilst the, the children were sleeping in the tent, I should say, um, a dingo brazenly crept in and snatched Azaria um, from the tent. So the Chamberlains, they raised the alarm and a massive search was organised. Did they see the dingo? Yes. They saw the dingo? Because um, I, I, I have heard of this story, but I don't remember details as usual. Yeah. There's a famous line saying, the dingo took my baby. It's maybe what you've heard. No, but, well, I watched Buffy. No. <laughs> I, wa yes. I watched Buffy, and I, I, I'm assuming you're probably going to say yes. this later. Sorry, so I'm just... Uh, yeah, a bit of uh, trivia yeah. for you later. I'm just taking it away from you. I'm going to say... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just because in, in Buffy, because I'm, I'm re-watching it at the moment, mm -hmm. so that's a coincidence. Oh, yeah, that's what you're um, I'm re-watching it, and Oz is in a band, and the band is called... The ding, the ding, uh, is it a dingo ate my baby or the dingo ate my baby. Yeah, it's probably different ways. Of yeah, it's yeah. a dingo ate my baby. So but yeah, but I did. I, I'm never. I never. As I said, I kind of vaguely know the story, but I didn't know if they actually saw the dingo or not, or if they just well, Lin Lindy, thinking that yeah. as well. Well, Lin Lindy says that she, uh, she did. Right. Sorry. I just so yeah, so yeah. So anyway, there was a massive search organised, but sadly, Azaria, they didn't find her. Um. But the jumpsuit that she had been wearing, um, that was discovered about a week later, um, which was 2.5 miles from the tent. There was blood stains around the neck indicating the probable death of Azaria, um, you know, which they're saying the dingo would have grabbed her around the head and mm -hmm. around the neck. Um, a cardigan that Azaria was wearing was not found at the time either, so she'd been wearing like a sort of jumpsuit thing and a cardigan, that's right. what she'd been described as wearing. But they found, found the jumpsuit, but they didn't find the cardigan. Um, it was noted at the time that for the two years before, Allura Chief Ranger Derek Roth had been writing to the government urging a dingo cull and warning of imminent human tragedy. Um, Roth noted that dingoes in the area were becoming increasingly aggressive and sometimes um, like approaching and, and biting people. Right. So that was noted like two years uh -huh. before. So the initial inquiry, which was held in December of 1980 and January 1981, that supported the Chamberlain's account of Azaria's disappearance, um, you know, that a dingo did take, mm -hmm. take her. However, the Supreme Court quashed the findings and ordered a second inquest in December of 1981, with the taking of evidence concluded in February 1982. So in a shocking turn of events, Lindy Chamberlain was actually charged with Azaria's murder in September of 1982. Wow. So, you know, we've gone from a dingo's taking the baby yeah. to actually know the mother's murdered the ba murdered her. Uh, so Michael Chamberlain, her husband, he was also charged, um, but he was charged with being an accessory after the fact. 
Um, so they're saying that the two parents murdered their two month old baby. Yeah, well, they're basically saying that one they did the murdering and he basically helped her sort of cover it up right. as an accessory afterwards. Right. But, right, okay. But she claims that I didn't go to her right. baby. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so and Lindy was actually pregnant with her second daughter, oh, Kralia, right. um, at this point as well when this was all happening. Um, so on the 29th of October 1982, the Chamberlains were both found guilty of their respective crimes. So mm-hmm. she was found guilty of murder and he was found guilty of being an accessory. So the coroner stated that although the evidence was to a large degree circumstantial, a jury properly instructed could arrive at a verdict with regard to the clothing evidence which i'll explain about that clothing yeah. evidence later um it was said that the chamberlains knew dingoes were in the area so they attempted to simulate an attack um they removed azaria's azaria's clothing uh, damaged them by cutting them um rugged them into the sort of the vegetation like made them dirty yeah. Um, and deposited the clothes for recovery on the basis of that and, and blood evidence of unknown origin found in their car, the Chamberlains were prosecuted and convicted for the murder of their two-month-old baby. Lindy was sent to life imprisonment without parole, and Michael was given an 18-month suspended sentence. So he didn't actually go to prison. Oh, okay. I would have thought that if he was... Guilty of doing that, then you would have got more than that. Well, that's what I thought. So anyway, so here's a rundown of what the prosecution's claims were. Right, okay. So their theory was that in a five to ten minute absence from... Because obviously, sorry, she said the the kids were in the tent and they were like around a campfire. Right. Was there anybody else there? There are witnesses, yeah. Right, okay. So obviously, it's also obviously at a campsite and then, you know, tents are obviously dotted around and there must be a a campfire that's like a communal campfire where everybody goes. Um, so yeah, so basically the theory was that there was a five to ten minute absence from the campfire where Lindy returned to her tent, Did um, she, apparently she did something to stop her son Aidan from following her, because apparently he was there as well. What do you mean they did something? Well, she did something, like she was basically tried, they're saying that she basically tried to stop him from following her to the tent, because I think naturally he saw his mum go to the tent and he was like, right, I'm coming with you. And oh, she he must was, have... I thought he was sleeping in the tent. No, oh, sorry. So this is he was at the campfire. Yeah, the two, and he was going to follow her. Yeah, but right. the, sorry, Reagan and Zara, they were sleeping in the tent. So right. he he was going to follow her up to the tent because he obviously saw his mum go. But oh yeah, I'm going with my mum. You know, as you do. I got confused. Yeah, because... sorry, I didn't explain that properly. <laughs> I thought you meant that he was. She had went to the tent and he was following her back out of the tent, and I was like, how do you, how did they know that? But like, I get it now. That yeah, sorry. Yeah, he was so, at the, so basically the she did, Yeah, so they're saying that she did right. something to stop her son Aiden from following her. Um, Apparently, she changed into tracksuit pants, took Azaria to the car, because she got Azaria from the tent, took her to the car. Mm-hmm. Remember, this is what they're saying. Got and used scissors to cut Azaria's throat. <gasps> waited for Azaria to die. Oh, you could have warned me about Sorry. that. I wasn't expecting... Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, I know whether it happened or not. Sorry. I wasn't expecting that. Sorry. I, I put it in brackets. WTF, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> um, hid her body in a camera case in the car, cleaned up all the blood, including on the outside of the camera case, removed her tracksuit pants, got her son a tin of baked beans from the car, returned to the tent. She did something to leave blood splashes there. Then her and Aiden returned to the campfire without ever attracting the attention of other campers, except for camper Greg Lowe, who gave evidence that he saw Lindy go to her tent with Azaria and... Oh, that makes no sense. Because Azaria was there. I said she was in the tent. Actually, maybe she was, maybe she was in the tent, actually. Because I said she was sleeping in the tent, didn't I? Yeah. But actually, no. She wasn't sleeping in the tent. She must have been at the campfire. I think, I think she must have been going to put her in the tent. Okay. Sorry, I've got myself confused. Sometimes it's... I get... Like, when, when you're researching from different places, it can, mm-hmm. like, you do get a bit thingy. So, sorry, I've written now that... He saw Lindy go to her tent with Azaria and Aiden and then walk to the car with her with her left arm around Aiden and um, her, her right arm unimpeded, which I think means that she had nothing in her arm. Mm-hmm. Um, so Lindy would also have had to have counted on her son asking where Azaria was because obviously he went with her mum and then all of a sudden she wasn't there. Right. So surely the you know the son would have asked, well, where's, yeah. where's my sister or whatever. So this is what the you know that's what the prosecution were saying that she had to do all that, but none of it actually makes sense. 
Well, yeah, I'm confused. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we'll carry on. So Lindy then returned to her tent, claiming that she saw a dingo take her baby. Um, but they claimed that Lindy opened her car door to give the dingo a scent, um, which was, you know, what they would say, a daring act, because obviously if a dingo was being quite aggressive, you wouldn't yeah. allow it to kind of give it a scent, would you? Because you'd probably be afraid of it attacking you. So I don't think... Is this just a... all guesswork? Like, Well, yeah, because it's, it's all circumstantial. This is what yeah. the prosecution came up with. So this is, this is what I mean, this is why it's a bit confusing, because this is what they actually came up with. And it, to me, it doesn't all really make sense, because... Why would she open her car door to give a dingo a scent? I mean, I wouldn't be brave enough to do no. that, would you? Because especially if they're known to maybe attack people and... I mean, she's they're making it out like she's set this up to look like a dingo attack. Yeah. It's a, it just seems I think a it's bit quite far-fetched. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and, 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 and obviously, like we're saying, when she's also somehow done all of this without her husband's knowledge. Um, or they're saying that he was also incredibly daring, given that you know he left his children in her care afterwards. So if he thought that she he had killed, if she if she thought that she had killed her baby, then why would he be allowing his two sons to be in her care afterwards? If he was, because he would surely think, oh my god, you've just killed our child. Why is he not killing her? Well, like I'm exactly. sorry, but if somebody, if my, you know, other half has just killed my two our, our two month old baby, then. But exactly, yeah, so that's what I mean. You know. for, that, for all that to happen to me, sounded very far far fetched. Mm-hmm. So in the second inquest, this is the this is like the clothing evidence. So this is what they said about the clothing evidence. So they said that one, the clothing of the deceased child had been buried prior to its finding and probably contained the body of the child when buried. Two, they said soil type of a pH found on the clothing is consistent with the pH of the soil at the camp and also with the consistency of the soil and clothing and at the site, and is inconsistent with the type of soil and pH in the area in which the clothing was found. Three, there is no evidence on the clothing of dragging or catching, nor the presence of saliva. So basically, this is them disputing the fact that it's been a dingo. Yeah. Um, it It was argued that the absence of saliva was not remarkable, as a witness gave evidence of heavy rain in the area, the clothing was not subjected to heavy rain as there is evidence that such heavy rain would have adversely affected the blood stain and on the clothing, and this is not the case. This lack of presence of saliva and dragging is, incon- is inconsistent with a dingo carrying the body a distance of some four kilometres. So basically they're saying there was no saliva on the clothing, so it, it doesn't sound like it's been a dingo, basically. Yeah, and they're saying it doesn't like, there's no signs of it being like dragged yeah, so and things, which... Yeah, you would expect, wouldn't you? Exactly. The, the next point was the jumpsuit was completely done up by studs to the neck, which remained closed while the child was bleeding. Five, after the blood had dried, the two top studs were undone prior to the clothing being buried whilst containing the body of a child. So they were basically saying that the parents had tampered with that. Okay. I think. <laughs> Six, there is evidence provided by fluorescent examinations to suggest the presence of a palm print of a small adult right hand and some evidence of the presence of a left hand caused by a person holding the child when that person's hands were contaminated with wet blood. A small person? Like a yeah, child? That's, yeah. Like, well, so small, what? Small, well, no, child? Sorry, it says small adult right hand. Oh, sorry. Small I was going to say, are yeah. they talking about a child being involved a now? A small adult right hand. So they're basically saying that I guess Lindy had blood on her hands already uh-huh. and, you know. Okay. Next point is single holes or indentations which appear in the clothing could be consistent with teeth marks of an animal, but the absence of tissue stains in conjunction with those holes make it inconsistent with an animal holding the body of a child. The evidence clearly establishes that the clothing has been cut and in places torn by a person or persons and in particular, the cut on the collar was made after the blood staining had occurred. It was argued that one area of damage in the general area of the elbow may be consistent with an animal tearing, but the evidence is very strong that such a tearing by an animal would be inconsistent because of the lack of evidence of the presence of tissue staining, which would inevitably be involved if an animal had caused the damage to the clothing. This is all just from like the, <laughs> this clothing that's been found by yeah. the, There's no body here. Yeah. This is crazy. Um, the next point, there's just a few more points to go. This is why I, I, it's like, I get too, so much information. So vegetation contamination on the clothing is inconsistent with vegetation found at the scene and inconsistent with the likely contamination which would have occurred if the 
clothing with a body in it had been carried by an animal. This vegetation um, contamination, what sort of clothing on an animal, this supports the view that the vegetation contamination was caused by human intervention, apparently. Okay. The clothes as found were not strewn around the area and this is inconsistent with an animal being responsible for their placement. So they were basically saying that it couldn't have been an animal that had sort of ripped off and left it there. Mm. The clothing was found adjacent to a path near the base of a rock and adjacent to a dingo's lair. Scissors were found in the Chamberlain's car on which there was present human photo blood staining on the cutting edge and on the hinge areas. There is evidence to support that when comparable scissors are used to cut through blood, that blood could be deposited on cutting edge. An inference, inference can be drawn that these scissors were used to cut the deceased's clothing. There is no weight to the argument that the subject scissors were unable to cut clothing as this was after the stud had been removed from the scissors to enable certain tests. So I know that's a lot to take in. Mm-hmm. But basically, <laughs> from that evidence it was concluded that both the Chamberlains were implicated in covering their crime. So, let's like say, this is all from a jumpsuit that they've got all this, this they've decided all this. Yeah. I mean, obviously, yes, scissors and bits and pieces. and. But, yeah, I mean, but, there's bits that seem a bit um, suspicious, you know, yeah. like, but I don't know, I, I, I'm not getting how you can convict somebody just from that. Well, exactly. That's what I mean. It's that that's, that's all the evidence they have. Um. So, obviously... There is a so here's the evidence that the dingo did in fact mm, take right yeah Azaria. I was gonna say we surely we need some yes. evidence <laughs> yeah, we, of we, that we need back backup <laughs> evidence so camper Sally Lowe and Michael Chamberlain her husband they both said that they heard a baby cry at the time when Lindy was with them was with them um so that was when they were at the barbecue or um so when when Lindy was with them at the barbecue area so obviously the adults were at the barbecue right area. um. See, this is where my... So honestly, I, I really didn't read this properly because I'm saying that this is when Azari was believed to be in the family tent. So now I'm confused about whether she was in the tent or she wasn't in the tent. And... Yeah, <laughs> I have this, nothing this to This say. is what happens when you get your research on to them. I should, I should have properly... I've just totally misread that information somewhere. Or, I've, or there's two separate informations that I've not clarified which one it is. So I do apologise. Um, so anyway, witness Judith West, who was camped 30 metres away, she testified to hearing a dog, a dog's low throaty growl, a sound that she associated with with growls that her husband's dogs made when um, he was slaughtering sheep. I thought you were going to say her, her husband's growl or something. <laughs> okay. No, no. Dog, husband's dog's growl. Right. Um, so Lindy, she also gave evidence that in response to others hearing Azaria cry, she went to the tent and halfway to the tent she thought she saw a dingo emerging from the tent and it looked like it was having difficulty getting out and was shaking its head wildly and but she couldn't see its face. So she cried for... She basically cried, Michael, Michael, the dingo's got my baby. Um, and then she ran into the tent and noticed that Azaria was in fact missing. So I actually think she was in the tent. I must have totally missed a bit from her being at, like, the carrying her up from the... And did the she connection. actually say that? Is that... Yeah, that's a quote. Michael, Michael, the dingo's got my baby. That's a very th- strange thing to say, though. Mm. The dingo's got my baby. Mm. Like... Or not got our baby. I wouldn't even say our baby. I would say her name. Yeah. Yeah, I would say Azaria. Like, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't refer to a... her as our baby or my well, she, baby. She says that again, though, because there's a... Like an interview on TV, I think obviously they've been interviewed by like a reporter or whatever, and she did say those words like the ding the dingo took the dingo took my baby on that occasion. So she did say it more more than one occasion. I mean, I, mean I know it doesn't probably doesn't mean anything, but I just think that's strange that she would refer to her as my baby rather than either our baby or her actual name. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you're ever talking about your daughter, you don't you don't say ever or my child like my. Well, you just say my daughter, but it would yeah. depend on who you're talking to. But yeah. you wouldn't shout to your to Justin. Yeah, I would say her name. Yeah, you wouldn't say, oh, our, our daughter's just fell out of her bed. Yeah, I would say yeah. her name. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, it just seems a bit strange. Yeah, but, but I'm sure it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, it doesn't <laughs> seem to click as us. But anyway, so yeah, so she obviously noticed that she was missing. And then she, so then she ran into the direction that she thought the dingo had gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, she called to Michael to get a torch because it was dark at this point, so they couldn't see. 
Um, so police detective Sergeant John Lincoln, he also gave evidence that he took photos of large paw prints a few centimetres from Azaria's um, cot and found what was probably blood outside the tent. He collected samples, but for some reason they weren't tested. But well, that's just stupid. Well, exactly. <laughs> You'd think that they would be, but no, apparently weren't. So camper, fellow camper Sally Lowe, um, she also said that she had... Uh, um, she said there was a pool of blood in the tent because she'd actually went into the tent and must have been to, you know, help. Yeah. Um, and she came out and she said that there was a pool of blood there, but the amount of blood was actually disputed by PC Frank Morris, who said there were only a few drops of blood on a couple of blankets and a sleeping bag. So that's quite a difference because she's saying yeah. there was a pool of blood. Well, a pool of blood sounds like quite a lot, doesn't yeah. it? And then not just but a yeah. couple of spots on a blanket. Yeah, but then the police officer, he's saying that, no, there was only a few spots, so... There's a bit of okay. confusion there. This is a very confusing case. It is actually, isn't it? Yeah, it's not as straightforward as I thought it was. Partly because of my fault, but... Um, yeah, I'm, t- I'm having nothing to do with this. This is all her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, but I think... Because the information... That, that was right at the start of the information, and this was the information later on, so I've obviously not realised that there was a difference of... Say, a difference of uh, what happened there. So I do... I should I should proofread it. <laughs> you should, but I've not seen anything because I've been guilty of stuff like that in the past. So, you know, know. we're not professionals. No, we're not professionals. We, we make mistakes. Obviously. <laughs> Clearly we make mistakes, so it's fine. <laughs> um, so, yeah, a scientific witness um, located blood on the wall of the tent and he said that the spray mark of blood was consistent with a dingo carrying a bleeding baby. Mm-hmm. Um, however, he did not believe it was human blood. Because oh. cane, those canine hairs were found, or so were, were located in the tent and on Azaria's jumpsuit. But, you know, the Chamberlains, they didn't own a dog. But and I'm thinking, so, well, isn't the dingo's hair then? You know, because oh. if the dingo was in the tent and maybe there's been a struggle, then how could the hairs of the dingo not get on there? Well, we know, I mean, I've never met a dingo, but dogs, they've shed hair really easily. Yeah. You know, we, we have been dog owners in the past and mm-hmm. we know how easy it is for dog hair to transfer on it. Oh, exactly. So I'm like, well, you know, you're saying, I mean, because to me, I think it sounds like that would have been a Zaria's blood person if, if, you know, the thing had taken her and there was a struggle, etc. And they're, you know... So I, I think um, what, it, what it sounds like here... Um, is the fact that a dingo taking the baby does sound quite far-fetched. Mm-hmm. And I think it, what it sounds like is that they're just... That's that's the way that they're thinking, and yeah. they're like, no, like it couldn't have possibly been. No, it couldn't have been that. This, you know, it couldn't have happened, and yeah, so I mean, they're kind of dismissing certain I mean, things. I've, I've seen that a lot of times in cases where, like, you know, maybe a, a certain police officer, like they they they're adamant that this they has have happened. tunnel vision. Yeah, basically, and they're not they're not looking at what all the possibilities could be. It's like, no, this is what happened, so we're going to look for evidence that supports mm. that. This, that yeah, rather than actually go. Oh, there's this evidence, which actually that could suggest something else has happened. But no, because we think this is what's happened, we're not even going to look at that. Mm-hmm. We're not going to entertain that, basically. And I think... We've uh, seen that before, we yeah, have. And, and I think that's what this is a bit of. Like, like they, they, you know, they were completely in disbelief that this could have happened, that yeah. Bingo could have taken the baby. So they're like, no, that's not, you know, this is not what's happened. Yeah, that, that couldn't and have happened. they don't have a body to, yeah. to help with that either. So that's why they're like, no, you know, they're not thinking of it. But you'd think that would be a thing as to not so much proof but to kind of go towards the thing with it like where is Azaria's body mm-hmm. if it was her parents that have, or her, her mum that's mm-hmm. killed her where's the body yeah. if, you know it's more belief if the dingo had taken her then that's well that's why there's not a body because yeah. the dingo t- taken well, her well exactly yeah so but I do think that this is what it sounds like they're just like no that's 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 never happened yeah, it's, you know that's it's not unbelievable, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's, it's totally unbelievable so Les Harris who was the then president of the Dingle Foundation, he gave evidence that, in his, in his opinion, based on years of studying dingoes, that a dingle could have had a baby's head in its mouth and carried the weight of a baby over long distances. Um, and he actually showed photos of dingoes with baby-sized dolls. Right, yeah. Them in, like, so to prove that... So it could happen. Yeah. yeah. But, however, forensic expert professor james cameron he gave evidence that based on studying plaster casts of dingo's jaws that it was impossible for a dingo to open its jaws wide enough to fit a child's head so again there's a bit of a dispute there because one guy who's president of dingo Foundation says 
no, there's yeah, they can, and uh-huh. there's pictures of, of like even dolls, you know, that would resemble roughly the size of a baby's well, head. Well, I mean, a two month old baby's not gonna, it doesn't have a very big head, does it? Well, exactly, but yet a forensic expert based on plaster cast of jaws say that no, that's impossible. So, uh. you know, again, there's a dispute there whether it could or it couldn't. Okay, <laughs> um, well, we don't know, so well, we can. Okay. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, so shortly after um, Lindy's conviction, she gave birth under guard to her fourth child, who was, which was Kalia, which was on the 17th of November 1982. And then she was returned to prison. Um, an appeal was put in, but that was dismissed. Um, she also had another appeal rejected by the High Court in February of 1984. But... Eventually, new evidence did come to light on the 2nd of February 1986 when Azaria's jacket, which police had maintained didn't exist, was found partially buried adjacent to a dingo lair in an isolated location um, near Ulru. So five days later, on the 7th of February 1986, for the discovery of the jacket supporting the Chamberlain's defence case, Lindy was released from prison and her life sentence was cancelled. Okay, but, but why just from the jacket though? Like, why they, could they not have buried that? Well, exactly, because again, this is my my <laughs> my thoughts on this. Because I mean, I thought I thought so. They were convicted on the basis of one piece of clothing, mm-hmm. but then they were all you know then then you know our, our life sentence was cancelled on the basis of um, another, another piece of clothing. So still no body. <sighs> so that's why I'm like, well, you know why? That's I, I, confusing. Yeah. Um, so so still, she could, they could have done it. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of like, was going towards the dingo doing it, mm-hmm. but then listening to actual, the evidence yeah. both ways, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I know. So the, the Chamberlains, they were actually acquitted by the Supreme Court in September 1988 and their convictions overturned. An open verdict was later returned in Azaria's cause of death. Basically, it couldn't be proved how Azaria had died. And that's the thing. They couldn't prove either way. So we don't know. Because um, I kind of thought the dingo had done it. Well, let me tell you. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, I thought you were done. <laughs> no, no, no. Quite. So the Chamberlains, you know, they pushed for a resolution into how Azaria had died. As, you know, they weren't happy with an open verdict. You know, mm-hmm. they, they weren't happy. Yeah. So it took until an inquest in 2012. Um, so that was like after 32 years of intense media interest, the Chamberlain stated that they remained unsatisfied with um, you know, their acquittal and presumed innocence and were keen to finally and definitively determine how their daughter had died. So on the 12th of June 2012, an Australian coroner made a final ruling that a dingo took baby Azari Chamberlain from a campsite in 1980 and caused her death. Okay. So it's officially ruled that so, that is what happened. We obviously, I don't think, are ever going to 100% know. No. Um, but, but that's what it's officially, officially yeah. ruled as. Um, mm. Yeah. And Lindy, she published an autobiography called Through My Eyes in 1990, which actually I'd be quite interested to read that. Yeah, I might um, actually yeah. have a read of that. No. Sadly, Lindy and Michael, they divorced in 1991. Um, and Lindy remarried in nineteen ninety two, so she's now known as Lindy Chamberlain Crichton. Um, and a bit of trivia which you ruined for me earlier was that in Buffy there was a band called Dingles Ate My Baby. Right. Well, <laughs> which I'm assuming was. Inspired but, yeah, by, it, it was that. inspired by that. Um, because Laura, shockingly, has never watched Buffy. Well, I've never watched it properly. I have seen no, bits. Yeah, I've never watched it from start to finish. Admittedly. Well. You should have because Buffy is good. Anyway, as I said, like I'm, I'm currently rewatching it, and when Laura said that she was doing this case, I was like, oh, and I, and I'm sure I've heard reference to. It. I haven't actually looked it up or anything because it's not my case, mm-hmm. but <laughs> um, but I'm sure because I'm sure I have heard a podcast on it before. Uh-huh. Obviously, I can't remember the details. You know, it would be years ago. Um, but I'm sure it was them that had said that there was that it was a bit kind of um. What's the word? Not tasteful, like distasteful, oh, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. The, like the, the named it. Should I actually really looked it up to see kind of what was really behind it? Like, yeah. but yeah, that's why mm-hmm. it was based on that that the, the dingo yeah. ate my. Baby. So yeah, so I, I guess we don't a hundred percent know. 
See, I'm not sure now because I did think before that it was the dingo, probably because the, that's what the official ruling is. But mm. actually, listening to it, I don't necessarily think that they're guilty. Mm. But I'm realizing now that there's mm. a possibility. The thing is, there's just too many. Well, no, it couldn't. This couldn't have happened, but this could have happened, or you know, that's impossible for that to have mm. happened. But unfortunately, without her body. There's not enough information. There was not, There's not enough no, evidence. There's just... They were never going to be able to definitively know because they didn't find her body. I mean, like I said, they, were, they, got, they got convicted off of clothing evidence mm-hmm. and then they got acquitted off of clothing yeah. evidence. So, I mean, there was no, you know, so unfortunately, her, you know, her body was never found. Yeah. I mean, whether they did it or not, I, I don't think they should have been convicted of it. I don't think, even if they did it, because there there wasn't enough evidence to show that they did do it. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. The police so. just obviously, that was how, what they determined. They were like, no, there's no way a dingo could have done this. That's yeah. too far-fetched. So the parents must have had something to do with it. Mm. And, that, and you know, that's how they've they've uh, done it. And, I just anyway. think it's too hard to, to kind of come... Because usually... You kind of come to your own, like by listening to all the evidence on both sides. You kind of come to your own, um, what's it, d- um, conclusion. Yeah. But with this one, no, uh, there's mean, not enough to go on. No. But at the end of the day, a two month old baby died. Mm-hmm. You know, body was never found. Yeah, whichever it could support a dingo by. Yeah, it could, you know, but whichever way it was, that poor baby, mm-hmm. like yeah. oh, no, two months think, old, and to think what she went through mm-hmm. either way. Yeah. Of doing it like that's absolutely horrendous. Exactly. So. But yeah, I'd, I'd, I I I would like to think that a dingo do just because I I would hate to think of a, a mother killing yeah. her own child. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like to think it was just a very tragic and. Yeah, I mean, like you wouldn't want it to be either way. No, but... I don't want it to be. I don't want to take the thought of it that actually happening, but you know. But to think about a mother to yeah. kill her two month old baby, you just you would take think. I mean, I know what happens. I know that. There's child killers in this world, of course, but that's I, 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 in this case, kind of that would be the preferable option would be the dingo. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's, it's quite horrific, and it is. I mean, it's I, in some ways, I, I mean, I'm kind of glad that they you know imagine it because obviously she was sentenced to life without even parole mm. for that. So I mean, imagine if like they she had never have. found that jacket that yeah. got, you know she would have still been in prison now and. You know, I mean, especially if she hasn't done it. I mean, what a absolute tragic, you know. Well, that's it's bad enough that your baby's died. Never mind you getting the blame for it and having to spend time. Well, exactly. In jail. Well, and the rest mm-hmm. of your life potentially mm-hmm. was that was going to be. So I mean, you know, at least she, you know, she obviously got released and she fought fought for the the verdict anyway. So I mean, yeah, I suppose you know you have to believe in in, in the total, in, you know, in the innocence there. The fact that they did get the official verdict ruling as it mm-hmm. being a dingo that had taken our baby. So, you know. Oh, well, we'll never know. No, as I said, you'll never know definitively. Nah, but... we'll never know. Okay, well, thanks for that. So, yes. um, thanks to everybody for listening. If you'd like to um, follow us on social media, we're on Instagram and Twitter as um, crime underscore divers underscore pod. Our email is crime underscore divers underscore pod at outlook.com. Our YouTube is crime divers podcast. Our TikTok is crime divers podcast. Am I? Um, if you, if there's anything else, because you know what I'm like. No. Um, if you would like to support the show financially, as we said earlier, if you'd like to join Emma over mm-hmm. and our other patrons over, it's patreon dot com slash kind divers. If you'd like to just make you know a wee donation, a one off, you can buy us a coffee at buyusacoffee dot com slash kind divers. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Bye.